All right. So now we've done the planning. Now we are moving on to execution. Okay, this is the part that gets overwhelming because the planning, the board making, the aesthetics, all of those things are fun, fun, fun until you got to execute them. So make sure your planning stage is thoroughly planned. Things are written down so that you do not get overwhelmed in your execution phase. So for execution, because I like to cook every single thing, I serve my guests except for desserts. I don't bake. That's not my forte. I buy store-bought desserts, okay? So every other thing I like to make myself. So because of that, I start a day in advance, okay? So I basically do my shopping 48 hours before, and then 24 hours before I begin the prep work. So in terms of prep work, what does it look like? Decor. If you have the space to set your table the day before, do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you stress. I personally don't because, again, <laughs> that area behind me is where everything happens. And then that area behind me is also where I'm cooking. I cannot set my table until I'm done cooking. But if you have the space, set it the day before. Get your decors in order the day before. If you don't, the day of is also fine. If you're the gift given type, get your gifts in order. Do your little mini cute bags or boxes, whatever it is. Get that in order the day before. Because the last thing you want to do is labeling gifts and writing personalized messages on the day of. You will be stressed out. So if you're the sangria kind of person, you want to make your sangria the night before so you actually give it time to soak so all the juices are infused so it's bomb the next day. Now in terms of cooking, this is the tricky part. Do as much as you can the day before. So if you need to season your meats, marinate things, marinate it the day before. If you're making a dessert like here, I made the lemon uh, pousse. I made that the night before because it's actually better. It gives some more time to congeal in the fridge. So basically things that you can do the night before, do them, wash your veggies, cut them, put them in little bowls, put them in the fridge so that the day of, all you're doing is just whisking things and putting them together on the stove. And now the fun part. We are on the day of your hosting. The absolute fun part. Let's get into it. First things first, start cooking early. Depending on the time you give your guests, depending on the type of hosting you're doing, if you're doing games night, which is like, you know, towards the evening, or if you're doing a Super Bowl night, or if you're doing a fight night, those are evening hosting. Now, if you're doing brunch, you definitely want to start even earlier. But even with the dinner, you want to start cooking early. Now, anything you can check off your list in the morning, do that in the afternoon do that things that can you know be easily warmed up don't toss your salad at 8 a.m and your guests are arriving at 8 p.m <laughs> you know what i mean so cook things earlier things that can be warmed up and not go bad or things that can be warmed up and not go soggy on you etc so just you know prepare things gradually and once you're done cooking clean your space and if you're like me that you need to finish cooking before you set your table this is a good time to finish cooking so that you can set your table and i'm being very real guys i'm going to show you a clip here i finished cooking but i did not finish clean on time before my guests arrived and i was setting up the table as my guests were walking in the door but it is what it is i was ready at least i was cute at least so you just have to work with what you have because sometimes things don't always go according to plan and make sure your home smells good that's why i like to get my cooking done earlier so i air out the house you guys should see me cooking like the doors are open the windows are open everything is freezing especially because now it's getting colder but you want to air out your house so that it actually smells good when your guests arrive so once you're done cooking and cleaning light some candles spray the house whatever you got to do turn on your diffuser whatever you got to do so that your house actually smells good unfortunately sometimes you can't always control that you know there's still going to be hints of food when people walk in but it's better to try than to have your house smelling like food hardcore when your guests walk in and also you want to set your ambiance what kind of music do you want playing when your guests walk in you know for me personally i think the italian host night that i had is the only one i've had pre-curated like you know italian um songs but otherwise just afrobeat because you know who doesn't want to vibe to afrobeat so just make sure your playlist is on par luckily my partner is a dj so i don't have to worry about that portion but if not curate ahead of time but yeah, so make sure you curate your music and the playlist ahead of time to set the mood and the ambiance. And the one thing a lot of people actually forget is how you look 
You just put in a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of work to host. Make sure that you look good. Make sure that you're dressed nicely. Your makeup is done. Your hair is done. If you're a girl, if you're not a, if you're not a girl, make sure that you're, you know, looking well put together, haircut, etc. Because you don't want to plan all of this and then you look raggedy. You know, that, no, you don't want that. So you look good. You smell good, and you are ready to receive your guests. And when your guests arrive, you need to also um, put into account: Are you serving them drinks and? apps as they arrive or are you waiting for later I'm more of a later person so I let people mingle you know maybe they'll make drinks here and there um, but I don't necessarily start serving you apps the moment you walk in I want everyone to be here and then we can move on to the app so it just depends on your vibe if you're more of a gay you have your little entryway with like you know drinks and apps you do that I will probably do that in the future but for now I'm more of a let everyone get there first so whatever tickles your fancy whatever it is make sure that your guests are being engaged when they arrive and I think this is the part that I'm so grateful to have a partner because if I'm still maybe like getting ready or running behind schedule he is there to receive my guest and then we kind of like alternate so once I'm ready I go and then you know he goes and finishes up whatever he's got to do so if you don't have a partner that's okay to just get ready ahead of time so you can receive your guests as they arrive and then of course after they arrive you eat so whatever your style of hosting is if you have a spread like this where it's more of a casual hosting just put out food people grab food then put out your food warm things ready to serve if you're more of a sit down dinner type of person make sure that things are put out make sure people are seated and then introduce what you've cooked it's always important to introduce what you have cooked if you did not cook make sure you introduce what's on the table that you catered if you did not cater and people potlucked make sure you introduce the items that people brought because the last thing you want is for you guys to go over to your food setup and they're wondering what is this do i like this is this what am i allergic does it have dairy does it not have dairy can i eat this is it there's is there chicken shrimp like you know so just introduce the foods that are on the food stage so that your guests don't have to guess when they go to grab food and then you eat you have a merry time you toast you laugh you kiki if you had like you know conversation cards you pull them out if it's like a friends giving like I just did you know people pause and say what they're grateful for whatever it is just make sure you're facilitating that um, interaction while people are eating because they don't want people to just be there silently like or rather, if it's a game that like Super Bowl or Fight Night, of course you can't do that while people eat. So everyone just focuses on the TV, watch the game, watch the fight, scream together and enjoy their meal. And then make sure after everyone is eaten and after the game is over, you have entertainment and games set up for later on. But yeah, it just really boils down to entertain your guests. You work so hard to get people to come to your place to experience a wonderful evening with you. So just entertain them, keep them engaged, keep them laughing, keep the drinks coming and just have a great night. So now dinner is done. This is the part that deters a lot of people from hosting. But I actually love this because I don't do a bulk of my cleaning the day of. I usually do it the next day. So I just tidy up a little bit so I can continue entertaining my guests. I might put things in the dishwasher and then, you know, restore my kitchen to what I love and like to see the very next day. So don't let this deter you. Focus on your guests and just tidy up the night of and do a complete clean the very next day. Just watching my kitchen go from this to, you know, being restored um, to the style and way I like it. And that pretty much concludes the art of hosting. So now I'm going to get into like, you know, the questions I got a friend of mine to send me. So basically she's been wanting to host, but then, you know, she just keeps pulling back, pulling back. And she basically asked me for pointers. And I told her that I was actually creating this video, which is wonderful. And then I told her to, you know what, send me questions that you would like me to answer in this video. And she sent them. So let's get into it. 